This is video number 102 on your Firearms Defense channel. Uh, I've been wanting to make this video for a while and uh, it's in uh, response to a, uh, it's uh, about a lecture that I've heard about eight times at Trump site now uh, regarding use of deadly force. And I also want to tie this in with the uh, George Zimmerman, uh, Trayvon Martin shooting uh, that happened recently. I've, uh, I haven't commented on that until now, and uh, I figured I might as well uh, tie that in with this. Now, the first thing is the use of deadly force lecture given at front sight. It usually, it's the second day, I believe, and it's given during lunch. And it takes about an hour or so, and uh, they tell you what to happen if you're involved in a uh, citizen self-defense shooting on the street. And they tell you what to expect and what's going to happen. Now, the very first thing they tell you is, no one ever wins a gunfight. You only get to keep what you had. That's the very, very first thing they tell you. So. Anyway, I'm going to go through a scenario. Now, mine's, uh, mine's a little more elaborated and exaggerated than what they'll go through, perhaps. But uh, I only exaggerate to give you an idea of what happens. Now, let's say, let's say you're a citizen. You have a concealed carry permit. You have your weapon with you. You're walking through a, a part of town that's not a bad part of town, but it's not the best part of town either. And, Sometimes things happen there, and all of a sudden this this guy appears in front of you. Let's say he's six foot eight. He weighs four hundred pounds. He's got a machete. He's got a crazed look in his eye, and he says, "I'm going to cut you up, and then I'm going to take your money and your watch and everything you have, and I'm going to drag your wife away." And I'm going to. And he starts towards you. He's fifteen feet away when he's saying all this, and he starts towards you, and he's got his machete up like this. So, according to what you've been taught by rule of law, you present from the holster, you point your weapon at him, and you yell, stop or I'll shoot. This gives him a chance to cease his attack, which you are required to do by law. He doesn't. He keeps marching forward. So you press the trigger twice and put two to the thoracic cavity like you're supposed to. And then you put two to the thoracic cavity. After that, you come down to the ready and you see if he ceases his attack. Now, you're not allowed to go press, 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 and put one in his head. That doesn't look good. You have to come down to the ready before you shoot him in the head. Now, let's say a small miracle happens, and you put two to the thoracic cavity, and he stops his attack, and he falls on the ground, and he lays there foaming at the mouth and bleeding from the thoracic cavity, and it, it looks like he's not going to make it. So, you being the goodest citizen that you are, you uh, stand there holding your weapon on him in case he gets back up and decides to attack you again. And you whip out your cell phone and you call 911 like you're supposed to. Now, here's what's going to happen after that. You'll have about half a dozen squad cars respond. And this is all for the lecture at front sight. You'll have half a dozen squad cars respond, two or three officers in each one. That's because they have nothing better to do and it's a chance for a little action. They'll come there, they'll come screeching up, screeching to a halt. All the police will get out of the car. You'll have probably eight or nine weapons pointed at you. Everything from shotguns to handguns to full automatic rifles and everything in between. And all of these people, eight or nine of them, will be screaming and things at once, telling you to do things all at once, and screaming at you, and shouting at you. And obviously, you can't follow all these directions at once. So what front side tells you to do then, they say, well, look, you say, now look, I can't do everything here at once. One person take charge of this. So one person, usually the senior officer there will, there will take charge of it. He'll tell you what to do. The first thing he'll tell you to do is drop your weapon. When he says that, front sight tells you just open your hands like this and drop the weapon. It doesn't matter if it's a $600 Glock or a $5,000 custom Les Bauer. Just drop it like this, nothing fancy. Then they'll tell you to back up and get on your knees and put you on the ground and spread you out. And 
they'll frisk you and front sight says they will frisk you and grope you in places that you didn't think were possible and it says front sight says just lay there and don't do anything uh, because if you do anything that they take as resistance at all it'll just be that much worse then they'll handcuff you they'll throw you in the back of the car they'll take you downtown they'll book you then you have to get a hold of a lawyer and the front side says by the way this isn't the time to be looking through the yellow pages for a lawyer you need to have one already lined up so you get your lawyer on the phone he comes down there and the lawyer will grill you for about three hours and when he gets done talking to you, by the way, the clock is ticking while he's doing all this at like 500 or 1,000 an hour or whatever. And when he gets done after three hours, he'll say, now let's go over this again and this time tell me the truth. Now, this isn't because he thinks you're lying to him. It's because he wants to hear the story over and over and over again and make sure there's no discrepancies. Now you'll probably be able to make bail, so you'll get out on bail. Maybe the criminal part of this will go away. The criminal part of this will probably go away. The civil part is yet to come, which is if this person has relatives, they'll probably sue you because you didn't really need to shoot their mentally ill and deranged uh, relatives. So there's a civil part and that's to come yet and if all of this seems like a real big big headache it well it is you know it's as they say no one ever wins a gunfight and you only get the you only get to keep what you have and it said if all this seems bad and terrible think back to the moment when you realize that you weren't going to get chopped into by this guy with the machete and you're alive and that's all that's important so that's about the uh, version of the front side lecture that I've heard about eight or nine times now. Now, as to the uh, George Zimmerman, Trevon Martin case that happened recently, now, from all the reports that I've heard about this, it was a righteous shoot. George Zimmerman was attacked by this guy, and uh, he was in reasonable fear for his life and uh, according to all the reports that I've read that have come to light recently he did what any reasonable person would do. Now consider this he's being charged with second degree murder he appeared in court on national uh, internet or papers newspapers and TV and whatever he appeared in court in shackles a chain around his waist his arms chained to his side He's charged with second degree murder. He's trying to make bail. I think they finally let him out on a $150,000 bail. His, uh, his life is essentially over. His, uh, his legal fees are going to bankrupt him if he has to pay the legal fees. I think his attorneys are probably doing it uh, for the publicity or pro bono or whatever. But that part of his life is essentially over. He, Probably, he seems like a decent enough person. He probably doesn't feel good about shooting this kid. And here's the other thing. He's received death threats, I'm sure, numerous death threats. And there's probably a ton of gangbangers out there waiting to shoot him that want to kill the guy. His life isn't worth uh, 10 cents right now. There's no place he can ever go that he's safe. And by the way, that's... Two of the things they don't tell you at front sight during this lecture. They don't tell you that if you kill someone on the street, he may have gang member friends who will come back and take revenge on you. And they don't tell you when these six squad cars of officers roll up, there's a very good chance you're going to get shot by these officers. They don't mention that, but I'll just throw that in here now just to, to complete my video here. And that concludes video number 102 on my uh, firearms defense channel and uh, i'll see you on video number 103